Okay, I'm here with uh, Lisa Gerard, uh, who's on her tour right now of North America, and uh, she has graciously, graciously allowed some time uh, beforehand uh, to uh, share some of uh, her thoughts and uh, uh, you know give some enlightenment to uh, her life and her tour and her album. Um, thank you very much for meeting with me today. Thank you. Um, first uh, and foremost, uh, you know, the uh, biggest uh, story right now is, is just uh, you know, the tour and, and being in Chicago right now. Um, how has uh, the tour been going uh, for you so far? So far, we've had the kind of connection that it takes time to digest. It might be 50 years before you see the effect of whether it made any difference or not. Okay. This is actually the first time that you've been back in Chicago since October 12th, 2005, and I know this very well because uh, it was the first time I had gotten to see uh, Dead Can Dance and also the very last show of the Dead Can Dance uh, tour. Um, I recall many uh, loving remarks from the audience uh, um, uh, toward you and, and uh, Brendan. Um, um, and uh, it seemed at times that uh, you may have been even stunned uh, by the audience's reaction uh, to, to the band's presence there. Um, how does it feel to be back here in Chicago again today now? I'm really happy to be in America now. God, that sounds like such bullshit, doesn't it? Um, America's the place I want to be. America's the place I'm worried about. I'm worried equally as in America as I am in Australia. They just have that little bit too much power. Mm. That's what I was wondering if you were, if, you, if that was what you were meaning. Yeah, and you know, all of our lives we say to our children, if you don't learn to share, you're going to be punished. You better learn to share. So what we have to be careful of now is, you know, when we, what we teach is, is what we do. You know, and I understand, you know, I mean, I've, I've looked at politicians and they're not young. You don't get you don't get 19 year old politicians. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your perspective on it. You know, they're they're there. I believe that they are at this age in their lives because hopefully that it's well, it's probably about the money, but I think that it's to do with you come to a point in your life where. You've had your kids, you've been loved by your parents, and it's your turn now to make pain your friend, and it's your turn to love properly. And not in a way that you expect anything back, but in a way that you are willing to put the time in and wait for the pregnancy. You know, it's amazing that as soon as we walked in, there was that woman there, mm -hmm. you know, awaiting the birth of her child. There, there are periods of time as when you pass a certain clock or, that's why a lot of the, a lot of the information to do with this silver tree is to do with compasses and, um, time clocks and astronomy and, uh, you know, um, uh, seasons because we come to a point in our lives where we cross the river and it is to send out love. It's not to receive love. I definitely uh, I share your feelings on that as well. I mean, to be... Um more selfless, and unfortunately, um, a lot of people are just very, you know, what's in it for me? Um, what can I get out of this this world that we live in? How can I, even in some, in a lot of cases, exploit situations to to get it more for me and, and become more and more? Um, it 
seems to be a lot of our a lot of the marketing ploys that uh, that are used. Uh, you know, you have to have this you, you know, in order to attain certain statuses and things like that. So it's it's unfortunate that, um, that that's how it is. But we thank God that uh, we can certainly um, we don't have to blindly follow um, those. Um, signals that were sent every day, um, we can choose to, to be selfless and we can choose to, to uh, shine that positive energy out um, despite whether we receive anything back or not. One thing that I do believe that we have, and maybe we're speaking too soon about this, maybe this is something that we'll get to talk about in 20 years. We have to learn to be alone. Um, now, I was going to ask you a little bit too, um, kind of along that line, um, where you're living in Australia is, is a little bit on the, the remote side, right? Um, uh, uh, definitely, how, you know, how do you manage um, situations where you're in these big cities like this? Um, I'm alone. Okay. You know, I walked out into the street in Montreal and a crack addict guy came up to me and I was crying in the street and he said to me in French something and I said I am lost. And he said, you're not us, I'm with you. Wow. And I can't discuss what happened after that because it's probably going to get me arrested. But there are so many angels in the world. You know, but anyway, you don't want to talk about that. What else do you want to know? Um, well, actually, I, I did have a section on, on faith, and um, one of the things uh, back in the early days of Dick and Dance, uh, you had studied many doctrines of faith and religion. I was curious uh, what commonalities um, you had learned and what differences have you found of different, uh, different uh, faiths and doctrines. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't have a religion. Okay. I love God. When the guy, uh, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, the guy said to me, uh, now you have to take Jesus into your heart and say that Jesus is real and blah, 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 and I did. and. And all of a sudden I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I, and I started praying in another language and I couldn't stop crying and oh. and it was amazing. I had read uh, in Christianity, or Christian Music Today I think it was, uh, that uh, uh, there was speculation uh, uh, that you uh, uh, may be a Christian. Um, I don't even know what it means to be a Christian. Poor Bush, you know, but what is it? <laughs> Bush is a Christian, isn't he? The, the defining I mean, on, terms. You know, let's be careful. True, true. I don't even, you know, I think, let's leave Christ out of it. You know, I don't think Christ has got anything to do with anything that's going on now. True, not the, not I the, really not don't. The world and I, I just, I don't think God's got, God's just decided, well, you know, what do you want to call God? God? Do you want to call God the complexity of the bee's wing that we don't understand? The faith, the love that we can turn to that's deep in our hearts, that changes us, that turns us from dough into bread, that gives us a spiritual dimension, that his son had to come here and be a philosopher and tell all the politicians and all the churches and all the all the establishments that 
they were no longer needed, so they killed him. And they're still here, and we blame him, and they use his name. And even though they murdered him, they use his name. That's the biggest crime of all. That's so bullshit, you know. But I'd rather leave his name out of it and keep it a... Because I really like that... Um, the white noise flute in Peru. Because I remember this lady died when I lived in Ireland. And I heard this, like, a white noise. And whenever I felt really alone or really close to God, I've always felt like a, like a white noise. I don't want to give God a name. Not on this planet. No. I feel we're sullying our lips by pretending to know who God is. We haven't got a clue. Oh, that's for sure. We look around and we take everything around here, own it. we take ownership of it. And any little creative thing we do, we narcissistically look into some window and, and think that we are responsible and we are glorified and we are beautiful. And We're not beautiful. We're not glorified. What we are here to do is to be a nurse and um, give others strength to remain the journey. Um, now, you know, not uh, wanting to take up too, too much of your time. Um, the uh, would you like to talk about the, the album The Silver Tree a little bit more or some multimedia uh, aspects? Yep. Thank you. Um, the Silver Tree was kind of like a private work that Clive Collier and, you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I never meant to play those pieces to anybody. I just made them for me. They were, as an artist, you... Probably the best way to describe it is, I remember when I was a kid, there was this woman that used to have a shell, and she held it up against her ear, and as you walk by, she'd go, and here comes a pretty girl with blue shoes on. She described what she saw, and the way that what I do with those pieces is they are a resonant response to the frequency that is that direct relationship, that first impulse. And I never meant anybody to hear them. Uh, the first piece in Exile is about the war. The first piece is... How can we teach our children to share? And I chose a, not a geographic voice, you know, I hate it when Americans say, but that sounds Arabic to me. Do you know, I've had it described as a cow giving birth. Hmm. So, I don't know what Arabic means. I'm not Arabic. The one thing about your music, uh, for me personally, is... Um I try not to actually categorize it uh, and, and literally just try and enjoy it. I mean... Um, How about we ignore the stereotypes that we think make us who we are and start to remember that there is a person that we were before we were introduced to them? You know? True. Yeah, it's like, you know, How about we forget about religion and we forget about television and we forget about petrol. Just for just 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 for a minute. And forget about wanting something. 
being satisfied with who and what we are at the moment. And just daydream. And just imagine what it must be like for a mother when she first looks at her baby. How many children do you have? Um, two. Two. But I have a lot of people I'm responsible for. Oh, understandable. And um, how? Uh, let's see. I know your daughter was her firstborn, or do you have two girls? I have a niece, and I have a daughter. I have a nephew and a mum and dad and a guy Tom. with us. Um, how, um, we kind of know how your parents feel um, about your career and your voice and stuff like that. Um, uh, how old are your children? Uh, are 15 and 19. How do they uh, feel about uh, your career and everything that you've accomplished? I mean, you've accomplished so much and you've been so driven. Um, uh, I don't expect them to have any real um, practical rationale on it. I know they can see the bullshit, but I know that they know that I work so that they can live. Do they uh, also have an uh, interest towards music or...? Uh... One of them's an actress and a singer. Okay. She's she's really good. Mm. She's Excellent. scary. <laughs> now the last date on your website uh, shows um, that you're going to be ending uh, this leg of the tour anyway, um, June first in Mexico. Um, is there anything lined up beyond that point? Yeah, I have to go to Japan. I'm doing a movie <coughs> in Japan. Scoring or being involved Scoring. in? Scoring. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to work with young Michael Edwards, one of the musicians that I work with on this tour. Okay. Uh, I've got a, I had a look at a documentary last night that I'm not going to do. I won't talk about that one. I'm meeting some guys in Seattle. I might work with them. The Japanese thing looks really interesting. It's a love story. Okay. And I'll probably spend about three or six months there. Okay. Um, Coming back in November. Really? Yeah. To Chicago? Yeah, to Europe and America. Oh, excellent. And I'm bringing a new dimension of the work. You're, uh, you're due to release a best of, you, you released a best of, but I mm. had heard that you're releasing a best of with a DVD coming up. Yeah. Um, and the Silver Tree is available online. Okay. That'll, you can buy it from the concert, but it's available online. Okay. But I, I want this new work to be across, I want it to cross the river into sort of slight theatrical, not um, entertainment, but, and not academy, but exposure to the membrane, to those things that, can't, that have to be, what's the word, slow release. That's the only way I can, I can explain. And now this is a complete transition from anything you've done previously? Yeah. Wow. I mean, you, you definitely, you know... And I'm using a lot of images, a lot of film work, and... It's, it's going to be different. I was going to ask, too, um, with a lot of your music, uh, and certainly the Sanctuary DVD, uh, lends to uh, a lot of visuals that Clive had, uh, had uh, so wonderfully put together. Um, do you think he'd ever put together like just a strict music uh, video kind of thing? With He's going to be involved with me on this next project. Oh, okay. okay. Good time. Excellent. And he definitely seems to have really uh, turned out uh, to be a... He should have been involved in this one. Just didn't work out. Well, I did have a question about the, the, the Come Tenderness video. Um, and. Uh, um, is there a meaning uh, behind the Come Tenderness video and um, how did the, the video um, sort of... It's my first 
attempt at a directorial. So, uh, how did it feel for you? I mean, were you very comfortable uh, in those reins, if you yeah. will? Excellent. Um, now, as far as the meaning of the of the uh, symbolism within the video to the song, would you say it's sort of a perfect marriage uh, of of what you're trying to convey? I want to see the ten years come through trust. Okay. That's why I use the horse and the rider. That's not about a boy on a horse. Yeah, I didn't think it would be something so blatantly no. obvious. I, I knew there had to be it's something not more. And birds. It's about trust and it's about the molecular, um, the flesh aspect that combines us and, and the forest and, and the fabric in the forest and the fragility and all those in, 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 interwoven molecular structures. Excellent. Well, it was a very beautiful video, and uh, the Sanctuary video in itself is an entire, you know, very wonderful work. And it was wonderful to, to be able to, to get to see you in different aspects uh, of your life. And, and, uh, and on that note, um, I will let you uh, get some rest, because you definitely uh, you need it for Chicago tonight, because we're going to... Do I shit? I'm sorry. Oh, no, not at all. I'm going to try and get a couple of hours sleep, and then... But I'm... I'm very happy to meet you. I'm very happy to meet you as well. You, I hope you can get some material out of